Okay, so let's welcome uh, our third speaker, uh, Dr. Su Wei Huang. Uh, Dr. Su Wei Huang obtained his bachelor and PhD degree from the Institute of Interdisciplinary Information Sciences, Tsinghua University. Now he's a senior researcher at MSRA Zero Center. His research focuses on developing solutions to address challenges in controlling and decision-making systems in artificial intelligence and machine learning. His recent studies are mostly on the design and analysis of online learning models like Bandit and reinforcement learning algorithms. Okay, yeah, so Sui, uh, if you are ready, you can start. Okay, thank you for <coughs> the introduction. Uh, can you see the PPT now? Uh, yeah, haven't. Yeah. This one? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I can see it. Okay. So, uh, hello everyone. Welcome to listen to my presentation. Uh, today my topic is Thompson sampling in combinatorial multi-arm bandits with independent arms. Uh, so, first I will briefly introduce about the bandit problems. Uh, in a regular traditional uh, multi-arm bandit, there is a set of arms, say one to M, and pulling each arm I will lead to a random reward with mean mu I. The learning procedure lasts for, uh, for example, t time steps, and in each time step, the system chooses to pull an arm and then receive a random reward from that arm, which is drawn independently and with mean. Uh, as given above. So the goal of the system is to maximize his cumulative reward by choosing the arms properly. For example, uh, they can choose the ar arms based on all the, uh, all the obser uh, previous observations. Uh, and in bandit problems, we often use regret to evaluate how the, perform uh, how the performance is, where regret is defined as the expected reward gap between your between your real gain and the best one can do. For example, in this case, the best one can do is to always pull the optimal arm that uh, gives you the maximum expected reward. So in, uh, after seeing this model setting, a very naive idea is to just use the empirical mean as the estimation of the expected reward based on the fact that we know empirical mean is an unbiased estimator for the expected reward. However, uh, people find that this method uh, fails in the bandit setting. It achieves a linear a regret linear with the time steps t. The reason is that in bandit problems, the observations depend on the chosen arms. So even if t, even if the time steps goes to infinity, if you do not choose an arm, you cannot observe its observations, and you cannot update its uh, its estimations. Therefore, the, the gap between empirical mean and the real expected reward could be very large, even if t goes to infinity. So a very simple example like this, there are two arms which gives you Bernoulli reward feedback. Then um, consider a best start that you receive a reward, a reward one in the first arm and a reward zero from the second arm. In this case, if you always choose to pull the arm with the largest empirical mean, you will never pull arm two and then pull arm one forever like this. Uh, by this way, you uh, uh, in this example, uh, it is easy to see that the optimal arm should be arm 2, and the best one can do is always pull arm 2. Therefore, there is always some constant probability for you to miss the optimal arm forever. And uh, it can be easy to see that this means uh, regret linear with time steps t. So because of this, in bandit problems, there is a trade-off between exploration and exploitation. Here, exploration means you try the arms that behave bad now, but have potential to be the best one. While exploitation means you're stuck in the best arm so far, which means you can just choose arms based on their empirical means. Too much exploitation, on the one hand, will lose long-term rewards because of missing the real optimal arm, as in the above example. Uh, too much exploration, on the other hand, will lose short-term rewards because uh, most of the arms that you want to explore are not as good as the best one now. There is a small probability for it to be the best one, but the probability is not uh, one, so you may also lose rewards here. 
uh, optimal algorithm should make a good balance between exploration and exploitation. And in bandit problems, the most famous and representative algorithm would be the upper confidence bound or UCB algorithm. In this algorithm, the uh, it computes a confidence region for the ground truth. Uh, here, the ground truth means the, the real expected reward mu i. So the, and the confidence, uh, confidence region means with high probability, we know that the ground truth is in this region. For example, uh, we can use Chernoff bound to show that the expected reward mu i uh, lays in the region, the red region here, from empirical mean minus radius to the empirical mean plus radius, where radius equals to about square root over log t, uh, square root of log t over n, and n is the number of observations. This is given directly from Chernoff bound. Uh, after we got this confidence region, instead of using the empirical mean as in the above example, here we choose the estimation of expected reward to be the upper confidence bound value here, the rightmost point here. This is called uh, optimism in the face of uncertainty, or OFU principle. That is, we know mu i uh, lays in this region, but do not know which part it is. Therefore, we think the best it can do. Since mu i represents the expected reward, the best it can be in this uh, region is the largest point here, and therefore, uh, we will choose this point, upper confidence bound, as its, optim uh, as its estimation. Uh, then the algorithm can uh, check which arm has the largest estimation of the expected reward and then choose the best arm to pull. In this way, uh, the algorithm achieves an optimal trade-off uh, between exploration and exploitation. However, this is not the only way to do so. In fact, people also find out that other, uh, other algorithms, such as Thompson Sampin, also achieves uh, uh, optimal performance in bandit problems. In the Thompson Sampin algorithm, instead of compute the confidence region, we update a posterior distribution for the ground truth mu i. For example, when we are using Gaussian parallels and uh, Gaussian observations, then the posterior distribution of the real expected reward mu i we, uh, would be this Gaussian one, with mean to be the empirical mean and the variance to be 1 over n plus 1. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, like a distribution here. Then uh, it draw a random estimation independently from this estimation, uh, from this distribution to be its estimation of that ground truth or the expected reward mu i. And of course, similar with UCB, it will then choose the arm with the largest estimation to pull in each time step. How this algorithm achieves an optimal trade-off? Uh, 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 let's see an explanation here. So we can first divide the real, uh, real numbers into three parts. So as I have mentioned, uh, if you always choose the arm uh, choose the estimation to be the empirical mean, it is a uh, totally exploitation and uh, it will be over exploitation. So we will call this part uh, near to the empirical mean point to be over exploration part. And for the middle part, uh, the, bl uh, the blue one from about um, the middle of the upper confidence bound to the upper confidence bound, we call it proper region. This is because the analysis of upper confidence bound algorithm tells us that if we if our estimation always locates in this proper region, then the, uh, the trade-off is very good. And of course, those ones who are far from the empirical mean, we call them over exploration. It is also not good. So UCB tells us we should always lay in this proper region, but people also find out that this is not necessary. In fact, a good algorithm only needs about almost no over exploration and some positive probability lower bound for the proper region, then it can achieve an optimal performance. Uh, therefore, we can see the aforementioned Gaussian distribution here uh, also follows these two uh, properties. It has almost no over exploration and only uh, and at least some probability in the proper region, say about 0 0.1. And therefore, it also achieves a very good trade-off. In fact, uh, because of these two properties, we are not restricted to use the Bayesian rules to update the posterior distributions. 
uh, very uh, this is not uh, a strict uh, constraint now. Uh, we can just construct this distribution whatever we want as long as they follow the two above properties. For example, uh, except for the Gaussian distribution or beta distribution that are very commonly used in the Bayesian rules, we can also use, for example, uh, uh, say a uniform distribution based in the confidence region or any distribution like this. Uh, both of these two new distributions also achieve a very good performance in, <laughs> in bandit problems. Okay, so now we finish a brief introduction about the uh, bandit problems, and then we come to see the combinatorial material bandit setting and see what is the challenge, uh, how would the UCB algorithm work in this model, and uh, what is the challenge it faces. So, as uh, I mentioned by the last speaker, yeah, combinatorial bandit, there is not only a set of base arms one to one, uh, this is the same, and it, each base arm has an expected reward of mu i. Uh, but instead of single base arms, the system uh, needs to find out the best super, which uh, formally speaking, there is a set of super arms here, and each super arm is a, is a set of base arms. So at each time step, the, uh, the system needs to choose one super arm to pull, and then gain the rewards and observations. Here we consider the semi-banded feedback, that is, we receive observations from all the base arms in that super arm. And the total reward, we suppose it is a linear function, so it is uh, just the sum of those, re uh, those observations. Uh, a very simple example in reality would be a routing system. For example, consider the following routing system. The point S keeps sending messages to point T. So in this example, we will treat the, uh, the links or the edges as the base arms. They are the basic unit of this uh, of this uh, system. As for the super arms, note that we are sending messages, so we must choose a path to let the message go through. Therefore, the super arms are all the passes from S to T. And once you put in a super arm, you can receive some observations of delays for all the edges in that path. That is the observation, the semi-bandit observation rule uh, for each in that path, you can observe a delay. And of course, your goal is to minimize the overall time cost. This is the same as minimizing the, the regret. So how would UCB work in this, in this model? As I've mentioned, UCB needs to estimate the confidence region for the ground truth. Now the ground truth becomes a vector, a vector uh, mu, where each dimension mu i is uh, 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 refers to one link, and it means the delay of that link. So when we want to uh, estimate its confidence region, if we know that all the outcomes of different base, uh, the outcomes of different base arms are independent, then uh, some concentration inequality would tell us that the confidence region will, will become an ellipsoid in the high dimensional space. Like this one, uh, this is only three dimension, but it could be a very high dimension. The the size of the uh, the number of dimension is the same as the number of base arms. So the center of that ellipsoid is the empirical mean vector, and in each dimension, the possible variance is about log t over n i. Here, n i means the number of observations on that dimension. So after we get this confidence region, how can we make decisions? We call the OFU principle. So in the non-combinatorial case, we find out the best performance of every single arm within that confidence region, and then choose the arm with the best best performance. Of course, in the combinatorial case, similarly, we need to find out the best performance of every super arm S within that confidence region, and then choose the super arm with the best best performance. So to do so, we can use the projection of E on the dimensions of S. That is, uh, for this ellipsoid, we project it into the dimensions of a super arm, say one pass here. And then we can check which, where, which point represents the minimum pass, si uh, pass uh, the length of pass of this pass. So it is this point here. And of course, we can try another super arm or another pass and get another minimum point like this. After all, we find out these are the best performance, and we want to find the best performance, so we take then take a minimum over z. 
and it got uh, it gets you the points that you want to use to make decisions. However, um, as I have mentioned, there could be a exponential number of passes, so the time cost also could be exponential. Of course, one can use some uh, approximate solution to deal with this problem. For example, instead of this ellipsoid, we can use the cube to be the confidence region. When you are using the cube, it could be much easier because we can just find the optimal superarm or minimal path at this lower left point. The reason is that when we project this cube into different dimensions, the lower left point always represents the minimal path in, in that uh, uh, the minimal point of that path. Therefore, the problem becomes looking for an optimal solution within a point, but not within a confidence region which could be done very efficient. For example, we can use the gesture algorithm to look for the minimal path at this point. However, uh, note that uh, in the uh, classic setting, we said that the upper confidence bound itself is the best point to make a trade-off between exploration and exploitation. So we can now here, we can also divide the, real, the, the space into three regions. This part is proper region, and this part near to the uh, empirical mean is over exploitation, and this part far from empirical mean is over exploration. And we can see if we use this cube and choose this point and find the minimum pass, then this, uh, this point always locates in the over exploration region. In fact, when the path has advanced k, this severe over exploration can increase this regret by a factor of k. Uh, so here is the challenge of UCB based solutions. It either suffers from a higher uh, or exponential implementation cost, or it suffers from a higher regret. So how can we deal with this problem? Why Thompson sampling achieves uh, a better performance? So we first uh, see how the Thompson sampling algorithm will work in this example. So similar with the classic bandit case, we, we also draw a random estimation for this pro, uh, at each time step. And, and in this case, we consider to use a Gaussian distribution like this. Each dimension is independent, and the mean is the empirical mean. Variance is one over ni, ni is the number of observations. We can see this is the same as in the Bow classic bandit case, and this time cost is very, is very small. Then, uh, after we got this random estimation, we choose the best superarm under this estimation vector theta. Uh, and we can see this is also looking for a uh, best superarm within a point, but not a region. And it could be also be very efficient. Then can this simple solution achieve the optimal trade-off, but not over exploration or over exploitation? So recall that in the non combinatorial case, we want the random samples to satisfy that uh, there is almost no over exploration and there is a probability lower bound for the proper region. We show that this is sufficient in the uh, combinatorial case. So we also want the, uh, the random sample or the random estimation to have almost no over exploration and a probability lower bound for the proper region. And uh, as we can see here, we draw a hundred of a uh, hundred of points from the uh, aforementioned Gaussian distribution, and then project them into the points. Uh, I project them into the dimensions of different superarms. Uh, there are the black points here. As we can see, those uh, random samples fall, uh, naturally follow the uh, seems naturally follow the ellipsoid confidence region, but not the cube confidence region. Therefore, we can see this part is over exploration, and there is almost no points in this part. This part is a proper region, and therefore there is always, and, and we can see there is always some point located in this region. Because of this, we can see this using the simple Gaussian distribution, uh, just follow the above, uh, using the uh, simple Gaussian distribution, just follow the above two properties, and therefore we know uh, it can also achieve a very good performance in uh, combinatorial bandit problems. In fact, we show that the regret upper bound of applying our Thompson sampling algorithm in the combinatorial multi-arm bandit 
is only n times log k times log t. Here k is the largest size of any cell power. And as a comparison, the non-efficient UCB using the uh, ellipsoid to be the confidence region can achieve the same regret hyperbound. While the efficient UCB using the cube as the confidence region can, uh, uh, can only achieve a regret hyperbound of about mk log t, and, uh, uh, which is about k times higher than our regret hyperbound. And we also provide some simulations for this case. So in the first one, we compare our time sampling algorithm with uh, uh, efficient UCB algorithms. Black line is our algorithm, and we can see it's regret each is much smaller than the, those efficient UCB algorithms. And of course, we also compare our TS algorithm with the non-efficient UCB. And surprisingly, the non-efficient UCB algorithms, blue lines here, also perform worse than our Thompson sampling based algorithms. In fact, we also find out that this uh, idea not only applies, uh, not only uh, works in the regret minimization problems, but also works in the pure exploration algorithms, in which we are looking for the optimal super uh, and do not care. Uh, in this case, we do not care about the regret, but care about the number of observations or the sample complexity we use when we output the correct optimal super. Uh, in this case, uh, based on the same idea, we've designed an algorithm called TS Explorer, and we show that. The, regret, uh, the complexity upper bound of our Thompson sampling algorithm is about mk log 1 over delta. Here, delta is error constraint. That is, you need to output the correct optimal superarm with probability at least 1 minus delta. And uh, similar with before, as comparison, the non-efficient UCB can achieve a simple, similar sample complexity, while the efficient one requires a sample uh, a k times higher sample complexity. Uh, here are also some simulation results comparing our Thompson sampling algorithm, the blue line, with the efficient uh, UCB algorithm, the red line, and the non-efficient algorithm, the green line. So we can see that our Thompson sampling algorithm performs only a little worse than the uh, non-efficient one, uh, and oh, much better than the efficient one, especially when the size of the problem is very large. This is because when k is large, the gap is linear with k. So, okay, as a conclusion, in the no matter in regret minimization or the uh, pure exploration problems, if all the outcomes of different base arms are independent in that CMAB model, then the Thompson sampling based algorithm can be either efficient or, or effective than UCB based algorithm. The reason is that in Thompson sampling, we could draw the random point efficiently. And looking for the random point, uh, looking for the best uh, super arm at a random point would be much easier than looking for the best point in the confidence region. Uh, because uh, uh, if you are looking for the best point in the confidence region, we may need to look for the best point of all the super arms and then check which one is the best one. This costs a lot more time cost. Yeah, this costs a lot more time cost. And of course, an, uh, another reason is that using that random point has very good properties. It has almost no over exploration and uh, always some probability in the proper region. Because of these two constraints, it achieves an optimal trade off between exploration and exploitation. Yeah, uh, here are the references of this talk, some of our papers on regret minimization and pure exploration problems. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much for listening. Yeah, thanks. Thanks very much for the nice talk. So is there any question from the audience? OK, OK. Yeah, I have one question. So if I understand correctly, you are not introducing new algorithms, right? You are yeah, mainly uh, yeah, give us a new view yeah, to the existing algorithms. Uh, yeah, in fact, 